Now, what kind of mistakes do you guys make when you're trading? I want to know. I want to know what kind of mistakes you guys make because I see a lot of traders making mistakes all the time. Getting stuck on lower time frames instead of higher for direction. That's a key one. If you're stuck in that lower time frame, you're going to be basically just imagine this. You're going to be involved in all the noise. On the one minute time frame, the five minute time frame, I'm telling you now, there's going to be lots of ups and downs. The market structure for that time frame is going to switch so many different times. Sometimes you'll be thinking it's bearish, it'll go against you, then you think it's bullish, it'll go against you, and then you're stuck. Whereas if you just look to the higher time frame, it doesn't matter if it was bearish or bullish on the lower time frames, price is moving lower, for example. You don't want to get stuck on the lower time frames. So I'm not holding my winning trades long enough, and when I do, I decide to hold it hits my stop loss so the thing is is this with that mistake that's another big mistake i made that mistake so many different times too what that is in a nutshell is this is we are conditioned to close out our winners early and also conditioned to hold our losses longer that is the, such a bad mindset to have and it's not it's not your fault it's because you know it's so hard to get rid of of that traditional kind of the way we learn about trading forex because we're, we're conditioned to hold our losses for a long time and then we're also conditioned to close off our winners early so what i do then is when i lose a trade and just so you guys know i do lose a trade um, but when i do lose a trade i will lose that trade within a few minutes what i used to do back in the day was i would be holding a drawdown for for hours and imagine what that's doing to your mind and to your mindset and everything else. It's really messing you up. Whenever I jump into a trade, I know that it's going to be a losing trade within a few minutes. Put it that way. And at the same time, when I'm holding my trades to TP, so for example, you saw the latest YouTube video, when I'm holding my trades, I hold to TP. And the number one way to get used to holding a trade, it's going to sound very simple to do, is just to hold it. You, you've got to hold that trade you could forward test it as much as you like keep forward testing that trade keep forward testing i know i'm going to say keep forward testing and you guys aren't going to forward test let's be real let's just let's just be real you guys aren't going to forward test i'm telling you now you need to forward test and then see what happens you know i feel like that's the best way to to learn forward test and see what happens because let's just say you forward test you take 10 trades forward test it and you hold let's just say you lose some you win some but then that winning trade bangs for example you're going to see the rewards from that the benefits from holding the trade hold on to those winners but don't be greedy at the same time be trying to shoot for more you know once it runs out liquidity you should be out of the game out of the game just like my latest youtube video you guys saw that trade which was a scalp hit that TTTM, you know, trading towards the money, hit that liquidity point. And I told you guys, I'm going to give my trade to other people. Listen, that's it in a nutshell. All I do, when I take TP, I'm literally giving my trade to other people to continue the trade, but on their behalf, not mine. You see it? And they're going to get their little one, two. They might get even a good move, but then I've got my share and I'm done. What two time frames do you focus on for entry? Oh, one minute time frame for entry. That's it. So the first mistake we spoke about on YouTube was the mistake of trading during news. Like if you trade during news, let me know. If you guys trade during news, let me know, guys. Let me know if you've been taken out because of news because you traded too close to news. Let me know whether you try to trade news, try to do that whole little breakout stuff that, you know, we talked back in the day. Let me know whether you try to do that too. Have you guys traded news? I, that's what I want to know. You know, because I used to trade news and it will flop me. I did a whole breakout thing, 20 pips above, 20 pips beneath. Then price to tap the break or my my buy stop or whichever one it was and then go back and hit my stop loss and then go and tap the sell stop and go back and hit the stop loss too. On my YouTube videos, I'm giving you guys some some really juicy nuggets. This is stuff that I hadn't shared for quite some time. This is stuff that I share with my mentees and I'm sharing it with you guys because I'm, I'm literally just giving you guys all the source. Just take it. Take the source, do what you want with it. And I told you guys, what was the key, what was the key thing for those who watched the YouTube video? What was the key thing from the very first mistake that we spoke about and what you should do about that thing? Let me know. I want to know he was like paying attention because I know that's going to be the person who's going to be more disciplined, who's going to win more and would lose less. What was the key thing from the very first mistake from the YouTube video? If you, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it because I show you guys the two mistakes. I didn't make the two mistakes, but I'll show you guys the two mistakes that people could have made during the, this trade. Let me know. If you know it, let me know. If you don't know it, then let me know that, that you don't know it and then um, let me know. So in the meantime, how if there's more than one liquidity like another equal highs above the low above the low equal highs what do you do you take partials at the first one you let the rest go to the next one especially if it's like an intraday high if it's an intraday high then you know you run it there if you're bullish 
and you expect a bullish candlestick, you will just hold. Or once it hits the first, the first one, the first equal highs, you can move your stop loss. Move your stop loss to something higher. Move your stop loss to something higher. If you get taken out, you get taken out. It's, it's all good. Bring in the trades to break even too early. That's not the, the, the answer to the question though. So what was the solution to the news mistake? People trading during news. What was the solution I specifically said to people trading during news? Every single person on this call right now, not call, you know, it's not a team call. Every single person on this Instagram live right now, after you find out this answer, I want you guys to stick to it. Yeah, let me know. I want to know. If you don't know, just say you don't know. Wait an hour and a half after news. Let's go. Who's that? Yes, that's the answer. Basically, I'm telling you now, the gamblers get in during news. They get snuffed out. They get taken out. They get absolutely annihilated. You know, things are going one way next, just like what I was doing or what we were doing when we were doing the breakout stuff. When price would break out one way, you might catch, maybe it might move 20 pips and then come back on you. Like, that's the gambling going on. So let the gamblers do their thing. Give them some time. Give them some time to feel, let them feel like they, they're doing their things. Terrell from Trinidad and Tobago. Let's go, Terrell. That was, yeah, that was the answer. Let the gamblers do their thing. Because, you know, there are gamblers. There's some people that don't even know what they're doing. I was speaking to someone the other day. They were like, they trade, they trade. Okay, I was like, okay, yeah. So, so you know, what kind of concept do you trade? You know what? I don't even know what you're talking I just trade. I just, I just trade. If I, if I, you know, just say the news is in, I just get a feeling that price is going to move up and I just buy it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What? So wait an hour and a half. An hour after news is okay. An hour and a half is good because you're going to get lots of false moves during that time. But then after the one hour and a half, it's just about waiting. You're going to see price moving. Just relax. Let it go. That's why I leave, with me, I don't stress when I'm trading. It's like, for example, if it's news and I'm not in a trade or something like that, I wait an hour and a half. Just wait. And then when the real move comes, that normally after the real move comes, let's just say I'm bullish, the real move is taking place. Listen, most things work. So that's just a key thing. It's key. It's, it's very key. A lot of people are trying to wait for the, or get in during the news and trying to do a madness or, you know, get in soon, just soon after the news and you get played. Wait till after news, after one to one and a half hours. Boom. That, that's the answer right there. I'm telling you now, that's the that's the key thing for that one. Man, you helped me a lot with trading. Like, actually, thank you. Yes, do you know what? That's my pleasure. Do you know why? On that YouTube channel, I'm telling you, every single video I've been dropping, the videos I was dropping back in the day, I would basically be giving you some stuff. I would be giving you just enough, right? The videos I'm dropping now, guys, listen, there's so much nuggets in it. If you're not profitable from the videos I'm sharing, look, I don't know. If you're not even seeing some kind of results, you know, even if it's a winning trade, even if it's a, a learning process, if you're not seeing some kind of growth, then I don't know. You know, maybe I can't help you, but I'm just saying, look, I'm, I've been dropping some some deep insights, showing you guys what I'm doing in the charts. So um, don't even trade after news like NFP, FOMC. Yeah, and that's just the next way to go. You can decide not to trade. I just know when the cleaner moves are going to happen. And it's normally about an hour and a half after the news release. Let the gamblers do their thing and then you go ahead and do your thing. But guys, yeah, the nuggets, the nuggets. And I appreciate every single one of you who have been watching the videos. Every single one of you, honestly, because um, the whole reason this channel is there is because of you guys. Like I told you guys in the very beginning the whole reason i started up this channel well you know what this channel wasn't even meant to be about trading and trading is not the only thing i do but this video wasn't even meant to be about trading by the way not, it's not meant to be about trading it was meant to be about just the stuff i do just other things i do in my personal life but then there was one time just one time i shared oh but by the way this was like a vlog we we're doing like an eating vlog or something like that i said by the way i'm in, i'm in these trades right now here it is, and I used to show, when I used to show people all of the all the monies and everything. I was look look at the trade. I'm up this much money. I'm up this blah blah blah. Whatever it is, here's the trade, and this is why I'm in it. And then from that video, it's like for some reason people are like oh, you know maybe I think YouTube might have pushed it to some traders or something. Um, and then oh people are like oh yeah, can you share some more? And then that was it. I just started sharing some more. People start liking it, so I thought I'll keep on sharing it. So um yeah, so the whole reason the channel is there is for literally for you guys. So how do you know when the cleaner moves are happening? I wait for one hour and a half after news, on, on news days. You actually took me out the dark. You used to trade support and resistance stuff until I found your institutional stuff on your YouTube early in 2022. Yeah, that's big. When I first started learning how to trade, there was no one who would literally teach me the stuff. There was nobody, nobody. I didn't know about no one. I didn't even know Forex was even on YouTube at, at that point. I had no idea. So we had some educators, but they were teaching us some like, instit um, not institutional, um, they were teaching us uh, retail stuff, retail concepts. 
retail concept. And I thought, oh my, this is nuts. This is crazy. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you can make money. At the same time, I was taking signals at the same time and, and all of that. Like, there'll be one time I'll go all in and the signal would work. And I'm like, whoa, I just doubled my account. You know, and there'll be sometimes I'll go all in and they'll just go against me. Like I said, I will hold my losers even longer. So whenever I went into profit, I would just quickly close it out. Let's say 10 pips or something like that. But my losers, I'll be holding to 30 pips. Yeah, the Institutional Candle Series is a game changer. Game changer. And that will forever be up on YouTube. Anyone can watch it. It's, it's a game changer. But your Institutional Candle video on YouTube is a W. Let's go. That's good. It's a dub. Is definitely a dub. My question is, why does new news do the opposite the trend? Because <laughs> so the way I see the way I see these is listen. First of all, you can't really you can't decide on news, guys, man. Like you can always like say, oh, this is gonna be my entry criteria. For example, let's say there's an order block below, or there's something below. You expect news to tap into that and then go. News is just used as, as a smoke screen to manipulate price into areas where there's, there's either going to be liquidity or areas that need to be cleaned up so like order blocks um might want to be used inefficiencies and so that's why oftentimes you see either price for let's just say price wants to drop it might spike up to the up close candle and then it will drop or it might spike up to the inefficiency and then drop so that's what i would want to see because it's going back up running out liquidity maybe collecting some more orders and then going again that's my whole idea behind the whole thing and then at the same time if it just drops and i'm bearish at the same time normally price is looking to get somewhere pretty fast and so yeah I, I might just leave it alone after that new york always does the opposite to the trend i know all the times being as the big banks yeah big banks oh the banks control it the banks control it so just bear that in mind but and then the second mistake so this was the main one and i want you guys to really full test this I'm being deadly serious because it's ha it happened to me so many different times during my earlier days and even middle days. So many different times. It's probably happened to you guys this week already, Monday. It definitely happened to you guys last week. I know that for sure. And it's been happening throughout this whole time. I need you guys to forward test this because I'm being deadly serious and no one has ever told me to, to say this or to taught me this or anything the key thing here and i think this one's even bigger than not trading news i think this is one of the biggest ones the biggest mistakes that traders make when you're in a trade and price is moving in your favor what do we tend to do we're conditioned from the very beginning to move our stop loss into profit but why why are you conditioned to do that because normally what would happen is price will come back hit your stop profit and then it will go in your favor and then that happened for time years over years right it happened for so long it happened for so long every single time especially with gold there was other pairs too but especially with gold price to come back hit the stop loss and then it'll go again and it happened so many different times this is why i said i want you guys to forward test this forward test forward test not moving your stop loss into profit so soon you want to hold that trade hold it it's going to take everything to hold that trade it's going to take absolutely everything. Your mind is going to be telling you price is reversing. Even if it does come back and hit your stop loss, for example, you do it again. Don't forget you're forward testing. You're going to forward test this at least 10 times. If you really want to dig deep into that, then do it as many times as you want. But forward test it. Even if, um, like I said, it comes back and hit your stop loss, do it again. Because oftentimes you're going to see price will come back, hit your entry, and then it will go again. And what would happen is once you get stopped out, you're going to be ticked off. You might not want to jump in again, or you might jump in go the opposite way. You get taken out the game. If it continues to drop in your direction and you're not in it, what are you going to start experiencing? FOMO, fear of missing out. Then you're going to jump in to that trade. You're going to jump into that trade, and then you're going to catch a very poor entry, and then you might get stopped out. Again, you might jump in again. Now it's messed up your whole day, probably messed up your whole week and your, your account. You know, if you're one of those people that does, don't give up, you're probably going to blow your account. So just be very careful with that, yeah? So full test it. If you think daily POI point of interest not be reached before sell, but expect to sell from one hour, four hour, at what point do you think they're going to somehow go to daily POI violating one and four hour timeframes? So if it's not been reached, if the daily POI has not been reached, and you're talking about um, at what point do you believe that they're going to go for it? Did you guys watch my seven step trading strategy, forex trading strategy? Yeah. The moment they run out of liquidity, I'm looking to take that to that daily POI. And if I get stopped out, the next day, when the moment they run out of liquidity, I'm looking to take that to the daily POI. The wicks get formed first, then the body, then they get to the agenda, and then they close. And so the bottom wick is formed. So I'm always expecting the rise before the sell, always. If I'm bearish, I'm expecting price to rise and then drop. If I'm bullish, I'm expecting price to drop and then rise. So, yeah, always. And if you just look at the daily candlesticks, go look at the daily time frame, look at every single daily candlestick, you're going to see a wick first, 
if you're bullish and then it creates the body the wick on top and then it closes for the day so it's always the the opposite before the, the real move just like eu this week okay i'm confused about the low of institutional candles what you're confused about price action is key definitely you usually price hits stop loss for days and then goes per your main direction that's why lots have to be smaller or reasonable for sure and at the same time just remember what i just said remember what i just said about the the wicks first and then the body that's going to be key. That will stop you from taking too many L's. Know where you are. Are you within those wicks? Protraction? Or are you within the body? The body action? The body work? You know, just remember that as well. That body work action. You know, during that body work action, normally things are moving quite sweetly. During that wick action, people are getting taken out. The wicks are doing the damage. Damn, you are smart, bro. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know what? It's, it's just seven step is on your YouTube. Yeah. Listen, I I've been telling you guys. I've been telling you guys, the videos I've been dropping have been absolutely serious. I think thousands, hundreds of thousands of people should be watching that stuff because I'm telling you, people's lives are going to be changed. People's minds will be opened. I'm all about the, the insight. I'm all about the thinking process and everything else. And so that's why on my YouTube channel, I'm always telling you guys, I'm always reminding you guys, think outside the box because when you was learning how to trade, you was in a box. I'm saying think outside the box, guys. That's the only way you're going to win. Think outside the box. Okay, price pushed up. Or some people are going to think, oh, okay, cool. It's going to be bullish. No, that's that's that protraction. That's enticing people to go long. But at the same time, when they're buying, guess who's selling and being the opposite side of the trade? Because there's always two sides to every trade. Who's pairing off orders there? Who's, who's pairing off orders? That's people like me. Okay, I'm not saying I, I don't move the markets, but I'll be looking to pair off orders. When you're, when you're looking to buy, I'm looking to sell. Put it that way. It's as simple as that. So, um, yeah, seven step fork trading strategies on YouTube. Go and check it out. It's there. It's so many nuggets in there. I love your car, mate. Great rooftops. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Needed space, man. Got a big family. Uh, thank you for your content, bro. Really changed my trading style. God bless. Look at the time now. It's one thirty-seven, guys. I've not placed no trades. I don't know if there's news today. Couldn't care less. But I'm saying this is the time news takes place. Guess who's getting involved now? Gamblers. Guess who's not getting involved now? Me. <laughs> I'm not involved. When I say get involved now, I'm not saying if you traded from London and you're holding into NY or something like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you're getting involved right now. Gamblers. I'm not saying you can't scalp during this time as long as you know what you're doing. But 2.30 equity open, guess what's going to happen then? There's going to be manipulation taking place. So look at that. 1.30 US embargo takes place. Order volatility in the market takes place. And then 2.30, one hour later, manipulation takes place. Could the equity open? That's the stock market open. Then at three o'clock, which is one and a half hours after the 130 US embargo, the cleaner move should happen. So why am I stressing now? Why am I trying to find a trade now? No, I'm not. I can wait to 3 30. This is why, because a lot of people feel like they need to be in trades every single day. Not me. Or every single moment of the day. Not me. I, I couldn't care less. Just been to the gym, got back. I don't care. You can do that stuff. Everyone's trying to get a trade right now. I'm not. I'm not interested. I'm not interested that in an hour's time. I'm not interested. I'll be looking after three o'clock though. If something's good, I might take it. But I don't need to. There's always Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Don't you trade London session? Yeah, I do. Uh, but I was I'm not trading today. No, I've been enjoying the NY sessions a lot more recently. But I do trade London session. That's my main session. Just remember that guys. So this is part of the reason why we're not we're not stressing out here. No, no one needs to stress. You're good. You're good. You're good. You know, for the people on right now, you're good. And don't forget, it's also Monday. It's the day after. And Mondays, which is normally known as False Move Mondays, is because everyone's so eager to get into trades. Everyone's just eager, eager. You know, the week just happened. Normally, that's why Monday's normally like accumulation days, where they're just accumulating orders. So just bear that in mind too. So always be thinking outside the box, guys. Always. That's what I'm doing.